Hey everyone, welcome to session number five with this eight-year-old Crypt Orchid horse that I'm working at, Sweet Bow Horses. So again, always going to try to pick up right where we left off. So immediately I lift up that stick and string, toss it over his back. We're getting a more relaxed trot from it. And then we're getting him just slowly walking off instead of bolting like he used to. So again, I think my biggest struggle with this horse is being able to keep up with him, but not add energy through my body while I'm moving with him, right? Because I don't want him to think that I'm chasing after him. I'm trying to stay more at his shoulder position and stay in line with him. Okay, so again, I'm just going to have to stick with him here, wait until I get him to chill out with the touch so I decided to slow him down instead so what you saw me do was I stepped right in front of his shoulder got him to come to a halt and then I kind of restarted with him I was like hey slow down we're not running I'm not trying to rope you I'm not pushing you around I just want you to stand still and accept this touch so eventually he ended up changing directions on his own so I'm just matching his footfall here trying to stay with him Again, today I don't have a camera person, so I apologize for being off screen some of the time. But you can kind of see in the shadow that I was just moving the stick and string up and down, trying to get him used to it. But he's feeling a little bit spicier today. And that's okay that your horse doesn't pick up exactly where you left off every single time. You know that would be ideal. So right here, you do see me pushing him some, and that's because I don't want that that little bronking behavior. Okay, so what I was doing, instead of, I wasn't really necessarily pushing him as like a reprimand or anything. It was more like, okay, I know you've been in a little stall all day. Let's get some of your energy out before we start doing this. So keep moving along. You can see he definitely needs to move to get that sass out. And all I'm doing is just smacking the ground right behind him with the stick and string. So now there is energy coming through it. Again, super important that they have the difference between sensitization and desensitization. So once I feel like he's got a little bit more of his energy out, I'm going to try to do the same thing again, just tossing that rope over. but he's interesting. He had energy, but he's a little bit of a lazy character, so I know if I just left him in the round pen and walked out, he would just walk around and sniff things. He wouldn't really... Okay, so now I'm trying to get in front of him and have him change direction, and he's blowing me off right now. There we go. Got him to slow down. But, like I was saying, he's a little bit lazier, so if I just left him out there... Uh, without myself being out there to push him around, I know that he would just kind of walk around and sniff, and then when I came into work, he would have pretty much the same reaction of wanting to bolt and shimmy away. So I did have to kind of help him work out a little bit, get all his freshness out, so then he would be able to focus a little bit more with me. Of course, all the good stuff happens off screen. He is just standing there, and I'm tossing that rope over him. Now we're coming back into frame. And he's been a little sassy still with the stick and string. So you can see we definitely didn't pick up right where we left off. He's a little bit unsure, he's a little uncomfortable, so you're going to see I'm back down to doing the little movements before I toss the rope over. Now we did have probably like a minute off screen of me working with him on this. So he already was able to stand still while I pet him with a little bit more pressure from it. Right now I actually have the string part of it over his neck and I'm trying to rub his face with the uh, more firm end of it. I think he's trying to play with it in his mouth right now. But I'm going to give him that release because he stood still a little bit longer and I know today he's struggling a little bit. I don't really want to push a horse around at all because it may be causing some mixed signals. So I want to put that lead rope on and see if I can guide and help him a little bit more, get him to understand pressure, and then get him to understand that the whip is just there for desensitizing right now. So similar to the last session, I'm going to open and close that little clasp 
get him used to the noise, and then slip it right on. So again, when you start to lead one for the first time, and the first couple times you teach them how to lead, don't go straight forward. Go to the side. That way it kind of puts them off balance a little bit. They can't sit against that pressure. Good. So now we're having a couple of steps where he kind of came in uninvited. So that's why I'm going to pick up the stick just as a precautionary measure. It's always good to, again, hold a tool with a horse that's a little bit more nervous or a horse that gets a little bit too confident even. Just so I can have that extension of my arm to reach and pet him and make sure I'm really not crossing over any boundaries that are going to make him explode. Good. So again, notice how I'm doing more of a pulsing rather than pulling strong in one area. Now, to get your timing right for that, it's super important because you don't want to continue releasing if your horse isn't giving you anything. Otherwise, they're going to learn to sit against that pressure, not relate it to what you want, which is them coming forward off of it. So it's important that you have a lot of practice doing your pulsing on the lead rope so there's enough give, but also your horse understands they can't lean against it. So I really like that he's picking up the idea of leading pretty fast again. So just like I talked about in the last video, it's important that you hold your rope correctly. It's a good example of me reminding myself of that while working with him. And I believe today we're going to work a little bit more on both sides. He's accepting that really, really well. So I just lifted up my elbow there and kind of blocked him from getting his head on the other side of the stick. Good, and he wanted to move over, so I was like, sure, let's try this other side. The other thing I like about having this rope on is I can get him off the rail. I talked about this a little bit in the last video as well, but I can get him off the rail and really making sure he's focused and paying attention to me and seeing how much he's really relying on that one side being blocked by the wall or if he's truly getting comfortable. I like that he took a step forward there. And then I was able to walk up and kind of pet his face, and he did step away. Now, he did turn his head away, but I think it's progress for him not to step away. So this was something that we worked on a little bit off screen already, which is moving that rope around his legs. Why is this going to be important? Because the reason that I'm gentling him, again, is because he needs to get gelded completely and have surgery because he is a crypt orchid. So it is important that his feet can be handled because I'm sure eventually he'll see the farrier one day as well. So what I'm going to do here is again focus on that pressure. Make sure he can give to me first. Stick with him the best I can. Again, do the pulsing. Don't hold a steady pressure. Good. As soon as he gives, release, relax, go right back to what I was doing. So there I'm putting the rope in front of him to make sure that I kind of create a barrier there. I'm like, hey, you can't just push through straight forward. And then I thought, okay, maybe if he wants to go forward, what I'll do is see if I can encourage him to come forward with the rope. Good, and kind of make it my idea there. So this reaction was super important to me because you all saw in that first video how he got a little bit confident, but uh, sometimes horses that are like that have a striking issue, whether it be with a rope or stick touching their front legs or their chest. That usually is the most reactive parts for striking. So I was really curious to see his reaction with that, and he's having a great reaction about it. Honestly, he's not even being too jumpy. Um, I've had some Mustangs that get pretty reactive with this. He's just having a really normal response. So I'm super happy with this. Just trying to get him to look forward at me, maybe step off the rail. There we go. 
good. So, and we already knew a little bit from the first one that he's kind of a bulldozer, so that's why the pulsing works really well with him. Good. Of course, eventually, we will have to lead them straight forward. So that was my first try at trying to lead him straight forward there, and I really liked that. He gave in nicely. He walked straight off the pressure. Again, go back to something that we've done before. A lot of switching it up between leading, desensitizing, getting that feeling of touch all over him. I'm going to stick with him until I get a few good rubs, and then I'm going to release and invite him back in again. Super, we're getting a lot less head motion. The reason it's so important that I desensitize his head, his face, his neck especially, is because I want to try changing out his halter. He needs to be able to live without a halter on. He needs to be able to have someone walk up to him and halter him. And if I can touch from a distance, and make sure he's okay with the feeling of pressure on his forehead, his cheek pieces, his pole, his nose, all of that, then I'm going to feel a lot more comfortable and safe when I go in with my hands just to either pet him or halter him. It's really good about the neck being touched, his throat latch area. And if you notice, that string on the end of the stick is moving around a little bit when I pet him, so that's also kind of some motion desensitization. He's reacting super good to that as well. Important we get both sides. Good. Love that reaction to petting his head. Super, he's doing awesome now. Once he kind of gets in his head that he needs to stand still and relax, he's able to be curious. As you saw, he just checked it out and sniffed my hand as I was rubbing him. But he kind of goes into that mode of like, okay, I need to pull through it and push through it and keep going on my own pathway. Or he'll settle down and be like, okay, yeah, you can kind of touch me anywhere. And he's very willing and easygoing with that once he gets into that mode. Oh, I think what I didn't want to have happen was I didn't want the tail end of it while I was rubbing him and petting him with the stick. I didn't want that to move and hit his shoulder or his chest and catch him by surprise quite yet. Again, he's being a little curious. I'm okay with that. But going to keep rubbing him. Not going to stop doing that. So what you'll notice me doing is I'm slowly sliding my hand down the stick. So it's going to be more of me touching him soon. I'm no longer holding the handle part, and I'm going to hold closer to the top of the stick. I don't mind this curiosity at all, but I am going to still keep an eye on him. I think he has a little bit of an itchy mane because he kind of leans into it every time and now he's wanting to play a little bit so I'm going to just correct him by moving my stick higher up on his neck and petting him. Kind of made him turn his head back. I'm going to say you can be curious and explore but you can't use teeth. Good boy. Decided to give him a good break there. So notice how my hand is even further down on that stick now. I'm almost at the point where it's me touching him and petting his neck. Good 
the reason I move my hand up and down like that is to create and kind of mimic the motion of scratching him. So I do that when I get probably within a foot or so of him the first couple times and I just move my hand up and down to get him ready for that motion in the feel. And he definitely seems to be relaxing into it, which is great to see. So you can kind of notice that I do have that stick there still in my offset hand that is to block just in case he does decide to go in and possibly bite me or want to crowd my space. It's there just to kind of keep a barrier. So and I know that I've been able to pet his head before. So again, just switching it up, going to something that we've done versus something we haven't done. So the neck is new. I believe that was my first time actually petting his neck. He's super funny with the rope. He keeps trying to bite it, so I'm going to start to correct that. That way he doesn't create a bad habit out of it. And to correct it, all I'm going to do is just wiggle the rope around a little bit, and that seemed to catch his attention. I liked how quick I could approach him right then and pet his neck. That's good because he is going to have to get some sedation uh, when he does have his surgery. Good, he's able to pretty much pick up really, really well on that other side. Again, trying to remember to practice that rope safety. This is super, super big. The other thing to pay attention to, if you guys ever decide to ground drive or long line or anything, make sure you're not wearing spurs while you do that, because I have had horses, even when I'm not wearing spurs, uh, have that long line get caught around my ankle or the spur itself, and that'll rip you right off your feet, and the horse may drag you around a little bit for a while. So the best you can to pay attention to your rope, all of your tools, and make sure that you're using them safely and just being cautious and careful with them. That time we had a little bit of teeth and mouth. That's why you kind of saw me move that rope towards him a couple times and try to bump him. And now I'm seeing if he'll give to my hand. That was a good reaction. Again, still in that blocked position with the stick, making sure he doesn't pop the bubble. He may be eight, but he does act like he's two. Again, making sure I don't create a bad habit. The really difficult thing with a horse that's newly getting gentled is you don't want to let them get away with those things because like I keep saying, it can create a habit, can create something that they think is okay initially. It's better to kind of set those boundaries, but you have to be careful because if that horse is just opening up to you, just getting comfortable around you, you don't want to be trying to bump their nodes or push them away or anything too aggressively initially. So now a little bit more motion desensitizing. I'm sure you guys have seen a lot of equestrians kind of move their body around funky or even dance around their horses, do jumping jacks. I'm making sure he knows that it's okay for me not to be slow. It's okay for me not to just stand still in one spot. So what you see me doing is, again, that same approach of do the new thing and then go back to something similar. So the similar in this case is now petting him with the stick. Add in a little bit of leading. And he's kind of blocking me right now from that right side, so I'm going to stick with him. Make sure that he lets me over there. And this is when I believe I started to use the stick as a little bit of a block. So you saw me kind of bump the air right then. Unfortunately, my storage got full, so I had to have someone fix it really quick, but luckily it only lost probably about 30 seconds. But you can see here, we're kind of in a little bit of a tug-of-war battle, and I don't want to resort to pushing him forward again like I did when I initially started leading him, because we're a little bit past that point right now. So I'm going to stick through it, keep going with the pulsing, keep waiting till he tips that nose towards me. You can see as soon as he does, there's a release in that rope. 
So we're going to sit there and relax, and then he decides, no, I kind of want to walk this way. So again, we're going to keep working on this, and you can see I'm getting prepped to put my stick straight up and either bump the air, bump near him to guide him over and change direction, because he definitely is blocking me out on that side now. And he's using outside distractions, like he just reached Smith the rope halter. He's kind of deciding to ignore me and tune me out a little bit. He's shutting down slightly. But I have to make sure that we end on a good note. So I'm going to make sure anytime he's looking at me and soft in his nose, I'm relaxed with the lead rope. So again, when he tries to push away, put that stick straight out. You can see what I'm trying to do is bump his nose a little bit with the stick so I can say, hey, there's a barrier over there. You can't turn away because he's still blocking me out on that opposite side. So and this is one of the reasons where I know it's a little bit, I don't know, kind of in the air of people that want to teach them to lead initially with a rope halter versus with a flat halter. But I do believe that uh, this puts a little bit less pressure on their pole. There we go. Got him to turn. So what I ended up having to do is be kind of quick with my motion, step to his side, and get him driven forward. Of course, this is right when my camera died, unfortunately, but at least you guys were able to see how I made that correction eventually after getting stuck on that side for a while. I had to step in there quick, add some energy, and just get him sending around that direction. If he wasn't going to be still, standing still, with me on that offside, then I just need him to track that way. I know he can go that way in the round pen. We've done it before. So I made sure that I followed through and got him going that way. Hopefully the next session is going to be really interesting for you guys. I think that one may make a lot of progress with, have some breakthroughs. But this was a little bit more of a firm session, a little bit more of a lesson for him. I hope you guys enjoyed watching it, and I hope you tune in for the next one.